All right, so we've got. Do we have the. Let's put the concepts up that they did yesterday. Well, we'll start with the we'll start with the area, and then we'll just we'll just double back through. All right. It's the home it's the home stretch here on uh, in terms of our focus areas, and uh, looks like we've got some new faces here for the next hour, and we appreciate uh, the the kind of people coming and going and participating all throughout the day. Uh, we're going to look at the next focus area, which is, we call it Diley Ridge, and that's mainly because it's named for the, uh, the Diley Ridge Medical Center that, that's there. There's quite a bit of property uh, to the rear of the medical center that uh, has development potential. Um, so we did a little bit of focus group work uh, yesterday afternoon, and when we did that, we had people split up into groups and, you know, share ideas, kind of conceptualize things, and then start to put those concepts, you know, loosely on paper, on maps. So we're looking at that image right now, and before, Andrew, before you take it away, just to orient everybody, uh, what you see there on the bottom of the screen is 33. And at the uh, kind of lower left-hand corner, that's the Diley Road interchange there with 33. So if you're thinking about Diley Road, you've got the uh, medical center there on the west side uh, across the street from Meyer. And um, there's quite a bit of land back there, but it's very hard to visualize. Not many people have been back there because there aren't any roads that go back there. Uh, there's a little stub road called Icorn Street that you can use to uh, get in and access uh, the existing medical center. Um, and you can kind of see back there from that stub. But otherwise, um, it's hard to see in from 33. And for the most part, people are focused on uh, you know, merging traffic at that point. And they're, not really, uh, they're not really looking. There's also a, a pretty solid screen of uh, vegetation through most of that. So it's hard to see in from uh, 33 as well. So let's take a look at uh, some of the concepts that uh, came out of uh, our group work yesterday. And if any of you were uh, present or uh, worked on these or um, were here but didn't work on them and have some uh, comments on your peers, uh, this is the chance to uh, kind of talk about that. What we really want to do is kind of refine these into one sort of preferred development concept that really captures the sentiments of the community and also talks about not just bubbles with uses, as important as those are, but the context, right? What is the look and feel of this site going to be? And what are the really unique qualities that make it such a developable site? And I think the uh, big one, right, is that red square that's been drawn on, on this concept, right? It's the fact that you have a hospital um, that has the potential to expand by uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of floor space in the next few years. Medical, medical uh, space is a really interesting thing to study. There are a lot of market analysts that, that work on medical space, but we did a, a deeper dive into it for a market analysis um, because you know, there is uh, definitely demand, right? As, as population grows, medical services are a lot like grocery stores in a way. Um, you know, we don't choose to not go to the grocery store. Eventually, we all have to eat. And so, you know, grocery stores tend to expand linearly with population, and medical services tend to expand linearly with population. Now, the specific mix of those services, that goes beyond our area of expertise. That's where you can really get into, you know, the profiles by age and um, other kind of markers that come along with lifestyle characteristics. But the general concept of, you know, an expansion of medical space uh, as some of these other development opportunities take off and as the population expands, not just within Canal Winchester, but as Columbus fills out, southeast part of Columbus fills out and grows. Um, you can already see this starting to take place just up on Refugee Road at the uh, Ohio Health Campus up there. If you've been up there and you've seen how that's just blossomed since, I think, about 2015, and they're just about to complete another 220,000 square foot addition uh, onto that as well. And then, of course, the really you know, high level of service regional medical centers are expanding. Uh, if you've driven up or down 315 recently, right, you see the gigantic tower that uh, the OSU is putting up for the Wexner Medical Center. So the Columbus region is experiencing a massive boom. As a matter of fact, you're number 10. Of all metros in the country right now, you're number 10 for the amount of square footage that's currently under construction specifically for healthcare. So that could be hospital, that could be uh, 
purpose-built medical space uh, for lease or for sale. Um, and so you're right up there with metros like Atlanta and Dallas and New York and places like that where you'd expect those numbers. And I think that Wexner project is the thing that's kind of tipping you into that top 10 at the moment. But it's still indicative of the level of growth and the demand for you know, the most modern uh, comprehensive uh, services, facilities to make those services happen that's taking place in the region. Um, and so, you know, the opportunity for that expansion to take place for this market, for the Canal Winchester market, and for a great part of its trade area, is naturally on this site. Um, Mount Carmel owns that, and so there are plans to build a hospital in the future. It's a joint partnership between Mount Carmel and Fairfield Medical Center. Yeah, so they already have control of that land? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they own it right here. So that's sort of, sort of a new point to talk about. You don't say this is something we wish to have because it's in your plan. Well, you're correct. So I'm kind of setting the stage. Yeah. It's not a wish to have. It's 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 a gonna have. It's a gonna happen, right? At some point, you know, next five to ten to fifteen years, uh, to plan to see that site expand. The question is, how can additional development, you know, adjacent development, complement a medical facility as an anchor? Right? So when we talk about anchors, you know, you think of it in like in a shopping center context. You know, back in the day you would go to, you know, Eastland Mall and Lazarus was the anchor, right? The whole deal was, you know, Lazarus was the thing that drew people in and since you were there, you then walked up and down the mall and spent all your money at the food court and uh, B. Dalton and all these other stores. I'm really dating myself, but that's okay. I like fond memories, fond memories. Um, that concept, though, economically can work with a variety of types of development. And, you know, something that's happening uh, in other markets, right, is the idea that, you know, a medical center doesn't just have to be this really super specialized facility surrounded by giant parking lots and it's just an island unto itself. Uh, people are experimenting with ways to, you know, incorporate other uses and make the entire thing more of a walkable campus type of an atmosphere. That could include housing. Uh, we've talked a lot about housing for maybe people on the younger end of the spectrum that don't have an affordable price point but want to live in the area. We haven't talked as much about senior housing, but that's uh, another big opportunity in this market. Uh, so being able to, you know, senior housing where we're talking about something that a senior who's, you know, independently living but wants to live, you know, in a connected neighborhood uh, may be attracted to doing something like that where you have medical services that they're accessing more frequently and yet it's not this big ordeal where I have to get in my car, I have to drive, let's say, all the way, you know, into Columbus, I have to park. You know, that becomes a day-long affair. If you're accessing those services frequently, wouldn't it be great if you had world-class services at a facility that was really at kind of at the center or at the edge of a neighborhood? that you lived in. And it acted a lot like a neighborhood that might have a grocery store that drew in people from outside, but that you could also walk to and access during your daily lives. So that's kind of the concept of thinking about this potential, potentially growing Diley Ridge Medical Center you know, as an anchor for future development that can occur on the periphery. So again, this is just setting the stage. And, and you know, I, I want to make sure we look at some of the uh, concepts that came out of our work uh, yesterday afternoon as well and see how they kind of, you know, have synergies, how they, how they uh, play one into another and, and where there might be some differences. Can we I guess, get a little more context? Oh, sure. Here. So, you know, you've got a large wetland area that kind of traverses the whole site. So you're seeing about a four and a half acre really wet pond, but you've got this seam that's really poor soils, hydric soils, uh, very wet, which would be difficult to develop. Uh, the other thing that's it's part of this site is you have a transmission <coughs> and so that's this line here and it continues all the way across and matches up with this line here and so that is going right across this site so that impacts about a 50 foot strip that you can't build anything on so no parking no buildings you know that has to remain essentially a green strip and how many acres is that the gas excluding the say excluding the hospital area how many acres is the rest 65. of that? 65 65 yeah the hospital has 35 the rest of that 65 acres okay and that excludes the pipeline then too the pipeline goes through both the hospital okay. site and the, the other site okay and you have roadway over the gas you line? can cross the gas line with the roadway you can't run it like right oh, down the top of it right. 
Does that compete with the transportation plan? The trajectory of the roadway? The, the roadway follows that gas line. So if you look just to the north of here to Canal Point, there's another transmission line that follows Dove Parkway. And that's why, essentially, the gas transmission line is the front yard setback. So you got a 50-foot front yard in front of those businesses where the gas line, so the road just runs parallel to it. So I mean, that's something where you can think about the extension of Icorn Street maybe being um, almost like a boundary. And you'd have the, the gas pipeline on the north of that, for example, so that you could develop right up to the, the street on the south side. Right? That's, that's, that's the type of thing that you could do in, in an actual de development scenario for the site. Yep. Yeah. A lot of surgery Absolutely. required a hospital stay historically. But now surgeries are being more advanced where you don't have to stay in the hospital overnight. So they place, don't want place you to place a difference so that you're out the same day. Right, right. I mean that was unheard yep. of even three, four years ago. Well and so much of it patient surgery. So much of it is, is, is non-invasive, right? They can take a laser, they can take a tiny fiber optic thing and, and thread it up inside you. They don't have to cut you open. That was what required, you know, this massive infrastructure hospital service was when we had to cut everybody open for everything. And then, of course, you're opening the body up to all sorts of dangers at that point. So, um, again, we're not, you know, we're not medical professionals, but just by, you know, doing our background research and reading, I mean, these are the trends that are allowing so many of these services to devolve from the actual physical hospital facility. And yet these doctors are all specialists, right? They need to be associated and affiliated with a hospital. They have a professional ecosystem, you know, and those are managed by regional health companies, either the university or, or Ohio Health or Mount Carmel or what have you. Um, and they have, of course, their network of insurance affiliates. So they all do need to co-locate somewhere uh, within a region. But that place doesn't actually have to be, you know, general hospital, you know, like. And, and thinking about those centers, they're generally going in more suburban environments where you have higher incomes because they want to capture the people who have their own insurance. They're not on Medicare and Medicaid where they get lower reimbursements. So it's more profitable for those even hospital systems to establish these suburban locations because, you know, it, they can make a lot more money on insurance. They can bill you a lot. And I, you know, when, I, when you put the, it's hard to remove the medical from this, but if you take the medical and put it aside, it seems to be a very lucrative investment for groups of physicians like uh, Ortho One at Easton. They own that facility. Yeah. And there's like 30 of them, but they own that facility. So I don't think they're funded unless they're secretly backed by another large medical <coughs> conglomerate. They own that facility, so it's a heck of an investment. They are. They own the facilities, and they would like to have seven acres, and we have talked to them. What's their number? <laughs> they are. <laughs> so just, but there are groups like that out there. Yeah. And in a, a way, I mean, they have their own development consultants, right? But. You know, from a financial perspective, that's a part of their business portfolio, right? Is is the property development and ownership aspect of it? So it is important to mention in this context. Correct me, Lucas, but the southern portion cannot—they can be uh, developed into medical related, but cannot be a hospital type facility. Yeah. So this was all owned by the Eichhorn family. They sold the 35 acres to the hospital. When the hospital went in there, they deed restricted the rest of the ground so that it couldn't be a hospital. It can't be a standalone surgery center. It can't offer MRIs. There's certain services that they deed restricted for being offered there that would compete with their services. Within how far of a proximity? Could Just the rest of this parcel okay. you're looking at. So, so with the exception the of the Kellogg cabinets, which is there, the rest of that plant. Yeah. So you can do, you know, you can offer medical appointments, right? You can go to the dermatologist, podiatrist, mental health service provider. You, you just know. can't compete. Yeah. So uh, where the cabinet company is, where Savetta's, do you remember Savetta's? Mm -hmm. Where Savetta's was, is that's not Mount Carmel, right? Correct. Or that's Dudley three and a half acres that's a standalone parcel. So those so, are the, the three owners. You have, you know, the Diley Ridge, you have the Eichhorn family, and then 
uh, Judy Keller. So, um, if Judy wanted to sell the back half of her property, just hypothetically speaking, that would be a place that could, you could have a surgery, an outpatient surgery center, yes. not competing with Diley Ridge, but you would still be in the, quote, medical corridor. Correct. Yeah. Is there at least seven acres here? There's three and a half. <laughs> and it could be yours for three and a half million dollars. Currently. You float me alone. I'll get you that check. Okay. <laughs> Dang, you're a good financial advisor. <laughs> Pocket change. Pocket change. Another another quick fact, we did a we looked at a spending analysis. Uh, just in this trade area. Um, I think it's 125 million is kind of the spending just on out of, we're not talking about insurance. Insurance-based medical services a lot more, but just out of pocket medical expenses, 125 million. And so that's equal roughly to what people in the trade area spend on things like apparel and accessories in a given year. So if you want to take a measure of importance on, you know, by choice medical expenditures not covered by insurance. So that could be an elective surgery like a, a cosmetic surgery or something like that. Or it could be, you know, you're, you're buying eyeglasses that you don't want to go through insurance for, any of that, any of that stuff. Um, there's, there's major spending potential. And none of that is captured when you look at a traditional retail market study outside of maybe, you know, a pharmacy or something like that. Um, but so untapped, untapped market potential there. So we get into this, uh, this first concept, and again, we're looking at a little bit of a smaller site, and we're getting into kind of less of a Waterloo situation where we have a defined character of the area, and we kind of have maybe a little bit more of a blank slate. So uh, we've got hospital slash medical center, senior assisted living. Uh, somebody tagged the, uh, that existing developed site right there on the corner as, as dining or hotel. Um, I see assisted slash residential senior 55 and over, um, and I'm not sure. Okay, the watershed area has been uh, has been delineated on there, and joint oh joint venture gym. So that was supposed to represent. Uh, is it River, what is it? River Valley. Down it's, it's Fairfield Medical and uh, the YMCA. That was sort of the a trend that's happening in Central Ohio, uh, where you know medical providers are leasing office space inside of community recreation centers, and so then the, the rec center serves as the rehab gym with indoor walking tracks. Maybe they're offering water aerobics. They're starting to offer some of the programming um, for the community in those spaces. So Hilliard uh, recently passed a. a income tax increase levy where they're building a new recreation center and they'll have Ohio Health as their partner there. Reynoldsburg has uh, Mount Carmel that uh, works in a conjunction with their YMCA that they built there to offer programming. Upper Arlington is working with OSU and building their new rec center where OSU will lease 20,000 square feet in there and offer the same services. So that's been a trend you're seeing in Central Ohio, so that's kind of where those discussions up at some of the tables yesterday. Is McConnell one of those two? Is that a partnership with Riverside and McConnell? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that they have a community recreation space in there, but maybe yeah, they do. You, you can buy a membership. Yeah, you can buy a membership to okay. the McConnell Heart Center, yeah. There was an employee at the Blue Jackets that was one of the benefits. You could, they, have, they gave everyone a bunch of memberships. What so, one of the, we didn't have time to ask questions yesterday, but when I see the senior living and assisted living, I mean, there's like three facilities more or? So there's a continuum of care that happens, right? And so we have an abundance of assisted living in the Canal Winchester and Pickerington market. You know, a lot of it's been built in the last five to seven years. But that's one level of care. So you have nursing care, which the state allocates beds to each county, and the state won't approve any new beds because they don't have the money to pay for it. So they don't want to provide the reimbursement to the providers, so they just don't allocate any new beds, even based on population growth. So what happens is you go and you buy beds from another county that has shrunken population. So essentially you go to Summit County or Cuyahoga County and you buy beds. And then you relocate them to Central Ohio. 
And so the nursing home is very hard to do. So you're seeing a, a big trend towards assisted living where you have private pay individuals that are paying $4,000 a month to live in these facilities. Another level of care is what they call independent living. And so independent living is, you know, groups of seniors that live together um, and they have some services that are provided, they provide some programming and recreation, but they don't have people that come in your room and give you nursing care, right? Maybe you have someone that's an aide that might come and help you organize your medication or they might come and help you get your laundry done. You know, things that you might need some assistance doing, but it's not medical care related directly. And so, looking at a facility like um, Wesley Ridge, right there at 256 and, and 70, that has a whole continuum of care. So if you go in behind those, there's little um, duplex condominiums, and those are independent living. And then you go into the facility and there's nursing care, there's rehab care, and there's uh, assisted living, all there. So that'd be like a stay in place, what they call a stay in place type of retirement village where the idea is you buy your little condominium as you get older, you can increase the services that's you get. Exactly what it is. And that's exactly and that's operated by the Methodist Church. Yeah, so it's all tax deductible donation to buy your condominium, yeah. you live there until you die. Yeah. And then you've made a donation to the church. And some of those even have low income, you know, opportunities yes. in them. And you think of that facility, beautiful facility. If you ever had a chance to go up there, go up to the top floor, you look out over Black Lake Woods Metro Park, it's beautiful. And what, how, how big, what footprint does that facility uh, have? Do you have any idea? I don't, I don't recall specifically. It's, it's larger, it's got a cul-de-sac with snakes in the back. There's probably 40 of those independent living units back there. 50 acres or? Not, not that 40? big. Okay. I would say probably 15 acres. 15 is all okay. All right, let's check out the next one. I kind of like the the blue and red uh, color scheme on this one, actually. So, you know, props to uh, whoever did that. Uh, this shows more of a um, again. We've got assisted living. Uh, they've got some of that uh, wet area preserved as a park. Uh, they made sure to show walking paths along uh, along these roads. Uh, joint venture again, rehab and gym concept highlighted, hospital expansion, medical office. So pretty simple concept here, but uh, integrates um, all of those types of living. Actually, that was a great intro to it, Lucas, because they, they, uh, they specify all of those uh, on one plan. I think I sat with this group yesterday. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> next. Uh, this one actually puts a little bit of that space in the back uh, more toward, looks like R&D, um, which of course blends in with maybe the surrounding land uses that are going to be to the uh, immediate north in the uh, industrial park as well as to the west. Um, we see the rec center on there, uh, dining retail hotel, so more of a conventional, um, filling that conventional demand for uh, highway interchange type services there on the periphery, uh, as well as the uh, as well as the rec center component. And what do we have here? This is uh, this has got a little bit of uh, uh, riparian corridor preservation in there. 55 and over living off to the uh, west side of the site. Um, Oh, this is the clean rooms. This is where that clean rooms conversation took place, which I didn't have a whole lot of chance to uh, listen in on, but I saw it taking place. So R&D, life sciences, clean rooms. And I think uh, the, the person that was talking about that said that there's like a demonstrated need uh, for those types of facilities um, in the region. And if you don't know what a clean room is, it's, it's one of these things where, think about a science fiction movie, you know, where they're going into this lab and everybody's got like three layers of uh, protective gear on. And I mean, we're talking about there isn't a single particle of dust that gets into this room for this equipment, right? It's, it's, it's as clean as, as you can make it. Um, so. Yep. Doesn't have to be medical. 
And so it just means you're very, very specialized. It could be a capitalist gas tank, like it's produced by NIFCO. Yeah. You're, you're you call that the critical parts, or the little cap that cool. you screw on. I did not know that. <laughs> but it's not, it's not the level of clean room that you're talking about for you know, these. It's, it's yeah. a clean environment. You wear a hair mat. You wear you know, a face mask. You wear yeah. Okay, so there are, there are different levels of it, all the way up to the crazy bio, right. whatever. It's kind of like contamination free of any kind. Yeah. <laughs> Negative pressure environments, there's all kinds of Cool. Would the Walgreens um, pharmacy distribution be a clean room? The components of that? Like, is there a storing pill like, for delivery? So, I mean, that may be a clean room. That's interesting. Well. We've got. Uh, Looks like that's, is that green on your screen? It's hard for me to tell no. on this. Uh, retail commercial mixed use. Oh, that's black. That's uh, this. It's a corner right yeah. now. Okay. So it looks like that. It looks like next is assisted living. Assisted living. And 55 and over, more of an independent living. Okay. Hospital medical office is the area that's hatched. Is that, no, that's R&D. Yep. That's R&D. And then hospital is the, the hospital. Case. Okay. This is the, the first palm tree ever to be planted. <laughs> it's a no, it's not the There's a palm tree planted by somebody on High Street. Yeah. 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 They take them in. Yeah. So I'm seeing, you know, I hopefully not uh, a lot of um, lot of dissension between these these uh, various concepts. And I mean, I think these were all worked up independently, but I mean, I think. Um, there's some general agreement about the uh, kind of the mix of uses that would work uh, if this were to be developed as a campus environment, rather than just saying the medical center is going to do what it's going to do, and you know, we're we're not going to plan for the rest of it. Um, the, uh, the whole the whole concept of this being sort of the medical corridor got me thinking about, um, and somebody had put a hotel on their drawing, something like a, a Ronald McDonald House only for adults because that is very difficult when you are caring for a family member or a friend in a hospital for say two, three weeks, you can't afford to stay in a high-end hotel every single night. And so the Ronald McDonald houses for adults, I don't know if they Do exist. exist. I'm sorry? Do those exist? I, I, I don't know. I know. Yeah, um, I, don't. Do they, I haven't heard of them. So. I know um, it was, they're difficult. I'm speaking from personal experience. We had had to we had to live for a couple of months in Pittsburgh, and um, it was very difficult to find. You know, you cannot. And we chose cheap hotels, not scummy hotels, but cheap hotels. And it's like you know that added up night after night after night, and we even got a discount and all that. And I'm like, so we started looking at you know even Airbnbs are expensive, right? And so. I would be curious if there is a market out there for it. For some reason, I think the Cleveland Clinic has a place like that. I'm, I suspect I think, they probably I think do. You're right. I think Cleveland Clinic has something. So, who was your audience yesterday? Because everything is directed towards seniors. Were there a lot of old people? There? No. No, I think no, there's no. just. I think the community realizes a demonstrated need for more Check. senior I'm housing, here, right? right. Yeah. If you look at our yeah. demographics and our population, it shows that we have an aging population. You know, the median age is 40. Just under 42? Well, yeah, was it 41 something? Yeah. Right, so yeah. just under 42 years old. So, you know, the communities, all communities are, are and, trending in that direction. And it was just this parcel, Jackie. We looked at two other parcels where we were looking at other options. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this seemed just to make sense with all the medical facilities. Probably because of DIA directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you look at all of the trending data around the increase in dementia and Alzheimer's memory care facilities are, are going to be a huge need if that trend continues and there doesn't, we don't find a cure, there are going, the trend is going to just continue to go up and up and up for um, Alzheimer's and memory, memory care kind of facilities. Yeah, I, I, looking at this parcel, the area at the dead end of Icorn Street, so there is a lot of interest in this sure. currently. And so we probably have demand that can fill 40,000 square feet of medical office space just on that eight acres right now. Um, it's just getting the infrastructure put in place, getting the roadways done, getting agreements in place with Mount Carmel to allow it to happen. 
because the roadway and the structure would have to be partially on their parcel. Um, it's in their plans. Their, their ultimate plan is to have kind of a loop, loop road around here and to build out, you know, this is 46,000 square feet. They would like to do a twin to that next to it, another 46,000 square feet that would be essentially the same building that would be connected through a corridor, a walkway. Um, that building is full. It's been full for 10 years. The facility's been there for 11. Um, so as the providers in there are growing, they have nowhere to go. And so you see them go into retail spaces like Premier Allergy that went into Massey's, they came out of that facility. Orthopedic One that just leased in front of Myers, 3,000 square feet, they needed to grow their presence. So you're seeing those growing, but they have nowhere to go. And so it's kind of the chicken and an egg for Dialy Ridge, like, hey, we know we have a need, but we don't have enough demand to fill that other 46,000 square foot building and it's so expensive to build right now. And so then they're looking to the private market saying, hey, can you guys build something that'll help grow our patient base here? And then they're looking at all the population growth in the area and saying, hey, we got 14 beds. We got 14 emergency room beds here. It's not enough. And so like they know they need to expand. It's just when do you, when do you pull the trigger? The challenge being they have two masters. You have Mount Carmel and Fairfield Medical. You got to get them to agree at the same time. That's a good idea to expand. So, what are the restrictions on that parcel, or are there none there? On this highlighted piece, uh -huh. yeah. So that's that encompasses more ground than this. But yes, that there can be no hospital, there can be no surgery center, there could be nothing that would directly compete with the services offered by a hospital. So you can offer. You know, specialty medical office visits, you know, general practitioners, those kind of things can take place there. What about behind the yellow line? Yes, that, like, uh, that's, that's the area we're talking about, the non compete area, right? Yeah, so to, this, the, right. to the north of it. I'm sorry, five that, acres here and then this. Keep coming yeah. around, like, go, like this, go Lucas. Go to the like left left. This. The non highlighted area? Yeah, the non highlighted, yeah, that area. What's that? So if the city owns this, there's about 40 acres there. About 32 of that is a large wooded wetland. And so that we have eight acres right here that could be developed and actually has great freeway visibility. But so no that's access. a wellhead protection zone too, right? So Potentially. So we have wells that could provide water So you can't develop on a wetland, right? No, you wouldn't be able to develop. So it's why do you buy It's a great space for mosquitoes and not, not for much else. You couldn't even do walking trails and things in there. It's too wet. So why did the city buy it? Uh, it was part of when we purchased Canal Point. So we purchased 300 uh, acres. I think uh, interesting to see the R&D on the last drawing because during our economic development discussion, there was talk about wanting to provide services based off of developing R&D or light industrial type uses. And then also during our presentation last night, Canal Point as a type of development scored relatively high in people's preferences of would they support more of that type of land use. And so far, for those of you who have <coughs> been with us all day, we also talked about the Bixby Road area but didn't really incorporate very much light industrial or R&D there. And so I think given that context, the R&D kind of portion um, of this campus is maybe an important component. Yeah, I think, th I think that's a good point, Jane. I mean, there's multiple directions that this could go. I don't think it's, it's necessarily cast in stone. Um, I just want to take one step back, Lori. You were talking about the Ronald McDonald House for, for adults. I think it's a phenomenal idea. And that's something that, you know, I can do a little research on. But, but I think the Cleveland Clinic and some of the other large providers do have, you know, a component of that. I mean, you're, that's, that's you're dealing in a, a family with, a, you know, a traumatic experience to begin with. And now you're trying to have to, you know, make do you know, in a poor hotel, uh, poor, poor quality hotel, 
right, to, to make expenses meet. One of the things that I have, you know, read recently in terms of the, the hospitality industry, the lodging industry, right, these extended stay hotels are booming. Um, in that particular sub-market. And one of the uh, places where they're booming, right, is in immediately adjacent to, you know, medical facilities because that's, they're being used by, uh, by families and things for that reason. Yeah, I, I can perfectly see that because when you're sort of under duress anyway, um, you don't want to have to go find a restaurant to get a meal. <coughs> you want to have your coffee pot in your room and just chill and you know, all that. So I can see where those extended stays are huge for something like There's, that. We have demand for that here. Mm -hmm. so we, we've recently had a market study done for an extended stay hotel here. Um, but they're looking for another one. So Adam let me know that he did not get a room here in Canelo just because all our hotels were full the other day. Excellent. That's, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, As, Adam. <laughs> people, people want to know, are we, are we absorbing all these new hotels? And apparently the answer is yes. So, no, I mean, our... With no special I events going on. Our week to yeah, our week to week experience has been really interesting. Um, about a year ago, it was never an issue, and then starting in the fall, it started to be a hit or miss thing about if you could get a room at one of the three hotels, the Best Western, the Hampton, or the or the Fairfield, right? Not at I'm not looking at Brewdog. <laughs> you should be glad I'm not looking at Brewdog because they charge like three hundred a night. Do you we think we're close enough to the uh, Rickenbacker Industrial Area that we're getting a lot of yes, clients. Oh a significant portion of the hotel business comes from Rickenbacker. A significant portion comes from construction workers. Fifty percent. Like things that are happening here, and you're going to continue to see that. So you know, a lot of these people that are going to be building Intel and building the Google data center that's going in Lancaster, you know, those people will not be local. They're going to be living in hotels for long periods of time. And that can really be the anchor for like an extended stay hotel to go here along Valley Road um, to fill those construction order needs. Yeah, I would say it's, it's, and again, this is, you know, not a formal count, but I mean, I always do a count every time I'm in a hotel. It's, it's easily 50% on a non week night, or excuse me, a non weekend night. 50% of the cars, and you can just do this yourself if you really feel like it. Go and drive through the parking lot and just do a count. Um, you're looking at minimum 50 to 75% on a weeknight uh, are, are construction workers. So yeah, when they're estimating 7,000 construction jobs just from the New Albany project are going to get spun off, um, I tend to see that, like you do, as maybe 7,000 hotel rooms. And the companies don't always put them up in an extended stay. They just put them up in the most convenient place that doesn't, you know, completely. It's going to be apartments. All the apartments in New Albany will be full from construction workers, you know, corporate people going in because it might be one construction worker that needs to be there for three or four weeks, but that same company might just see, need to see, send someone else with a different specialty in, and so those just become corporate housing. And so you're gonna see a lot of corporate housing needs pop up in Central Ohio as well. You know what would be pretty awesome? Is to take the old high school and convert those to like dormitory space and be able to supply a low cost construction worker Temporary, <laughs> pretty kind of something like that. A I don't know if the community would share your. <laughs> 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 They're gonna hear like boarding house. <laughs> right. It's not. <laughs> it's not boarding house for for uh, young construction worker men. They're not gonna think that's a good idea. There's a small town in Minnesota <laughs> that actually did that with their school, and they actually held it up. You know, did wasn't there something on the news uh, that uh, children's school. services? was having to put kids up in an office building because they didn't have another space to put them. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, That's yeah, so where are you going to put these you know, 7,000 like, construction workers? Back to the hotel, mm -hmm. if you look at the Lancaster market, it's severely underserved for hotels. Like, there's a Hampton Inn. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's a Holiday, there's a Holiday Inn Express. So you have yeah. those two They're options. And then everything else is really, like, yeah. Low budget. Low, it's, low budget. It's, yeah. it's built, you know, 70s, 80s stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So they're severely like underserved large. in hotels in Lancaster, but they can't get anyone to make that leap to, to invest there. So, but people will look at Diley Road as an option because, you know, you look, Hamilton Road's got hotels, you know, Gender Road's got hotels. This is really the next interchange. Yeah, was well, and Bixby, too. And that people are going down 33 or south or north, this is a natural stop-off 
place to you know, stay the night. Yeah. You don't have to get in the mix of madness of downtown on 270. Right. So it's a very convenient place that some people pull off and stay the night. Yeah, and so Fairville County Visitors Bureau is doing a study, a hotel study right now as well. We're trying to figure out where, where hotels would be needed in Fairville County because they, they know they have a, a need that's unmet. And so they're looking at Buckeye Lake area, they're looking at downtown Lancaster, they're looking at further south along 33 to kind of start serving the Hocking Hills market. And Athens hotels are always full. So right. It's now and Logan doesn't really have Athens. hotels because, you know, Hocking Hills yeah. fills up everything in that area. Right. But that's one of the options yeah. that the developer that owns Waterloo, which was our last discussion, is looking at as well. So his main business is cabin business in Hocking Hills. He owns 40 some cabins in Hocking Hills. And so <coughs> is there an opportunity to develop some small cabins as rental options um, for you know corporate retreats, for you know hotel stays, yep. for weddings? Well, that's that's a boutique concept. I think there's room in the market for that too. You know, a hotel doesn't just have to mean the corporate build a, a Fairfield Inn box or build a, a Woodspring Suites extended stay box, right? It could be uh, a more boutique concept. I like the cabin concept. Another one that we uh, helped a different community in Michigan look, look at is uh, the glamping concept. I don't know if you're familiar with, yes. with that. With the... Uh, yurts or, you know, we, like that. This one didn't have yurts. It was Airstreams. It was Airstream trailers. Okay. Um, and so you had common facilities like a, a, con a little conference center with a restaurant. <laughs> Um, but then you had the individual Airstream trailers. This is a company that's done these all across more of the western states. They have them in Utah, all up and down California. And now they're starting to look at a couple markets east of the Mississippi um, and, and start to do that in the Midwest. So they want to be close. You know, they want to be close to, you know, metro areas. But, of course, you're not going to be able to do it, you know, right in a metro area. So you want to be on the outskirts. You want to be somewhere where there's some natural amenities uh, and some preserved open space. Um, but then, the, you know, the type of visitor to something like that still wants to be close to a more boutique kind of a district, like an old town canal or like, you know, wave a magic wand and what we talked about with Waterloo, you know, those types of places. We also talked about just to bring it up again, having a hotel and have meeting space in it. The convention hall would be, I think, a yes. good addition for the community because none of the hotels have that now. Exactly. No, they're they're well. Yes and no. I mean, if you if you've been to BrewDog, I mean, BrewDog technically has that. Yeah, we're going to spend three hundred dollars a night. But yeah, that's that's a niche product. Our main business. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the state yeah. user, yeah. the teacher yeah. organization, that's who I work with. They're not going to pay that much right. for a room. And yet, they have meetings in hotels. Yes. So, so the one of the things rooms. they're looking at for the, the Cheney Mill yeah. is converting that into a larger meeting space. Right. And then so that could serve that need in Canal Winchester right. for, you know, wedding receptions and things like that that you might want to accommodate up to 200. Yeah, 250. I heard that. But I know as a teacher and as a government employee, I had you know, two or three meetings a year. I'd spend several days a year in yeah, hotels or the meetings room. Yeah. So there's a demand for that. private businesses the same way. Right, you usually end up in state parks and things as a state employee. That's where they yeah. have your conference. No, we, uh, we, stay, we stayed in hotels. Yeah. You know, yeah. In Ohio, you usually end up in one of the state parks that has a meeting facility. Yeah. They have a lodge. You stay in the lodge. Yeah, yeah not in Minnesota. <laughs> they didn't spend that much on us. <laughs> Okay, so I know we're running a little short on time. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we have 10 minutes left on the schedule. But just but. general concepts, I guess, you know, everyone kind of shared the same thoughts and ideas. Is, is that resonating with everyone, kind of what's been laid out? Do you think there's anything that's missing from those concepts that could be included, um, would be appropriate to be included? I think one, one of the things we do want to make sure is that, you know, if this is a campus type of environment, we still want to have internal connectivity. We still want to have internal walkability. Um, you know, anywhere else you would kind of build these things out one by one and you might lose that in the process. I think there are, you know, natural amenities, you know, on the, uh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Just okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. 
Inside joke, I, I got you, no. Uh, no, I think there are natural amenities that um, we want to make sure that we, we kind of capitalize on and, and capture in a development scenario for this area. It would be nice if you had some means of getting people from this side of Dialing Road over to the other side of Dialing Road in your development plans. I don't know how you could do that, but transportation issue, I guess. Well, that played into our, our conversation uh, first thing this morning, you know, when we were talking about, you know, what are the more appropriate areas? If you were to look ahead and say, you know, if we were to have a pedestrian link across 33, you know, it's, there's so much of 33 just in terms of distance right along kind of the, as it, as it goes through Canal Winchester. So there are a number of points where people need to cross, right? Ginder Road, Diley Road, uh, High Street, you know, and is there, if you were to make an investment in a non-motorized, you know, bridge, right, or connection across 33 somehow, you know, where would that, where would that be? And so one of the areas identified was, well, is there potential if we're doing development in Waterloo? And then if we're doing development on the other side in Diley Ridge, you know, is there a potential to do it there? Maybe not coincident with one of the road crossings, you know, as, as an extension of the, the non-motorized network. Uh, getting across Diley. We have good yeah. trails, you know, and, and the hospital has a whole trail network here. They have sidewalk out to this point, and they have sidewalk here. So there is actual a crossing mm -hmm. there. Yeah, but it's taking your life in your exactly own hands. How safe do you feel yeah. at, at crossing at that point? You do have a traffic signal. You have pedestrian crossing signals. So, but you have to feel safe. We should just have a little canal in Chester mini transit system yeah. like Fairfield County yeah. does. Yeah. 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 There'll just, there'll just be little robots. It'll just, just cross the street. Thank you. Use the Meyer app and then just send a little robot. <laughs> That's not that far to Meyer. The golf cart you could take over there. Oh, yeah, there you go. I just, I just think that would be a nice convenience. It, you just have to make those crosswalks safe. Was, I mean, it was a miss when that interchange was built. It was a miss to not include pedestrian facilities in it. You know, that's all in unincorporated areas, not the city. So the city didn't really have any input on how the interchange was done. And I think at the time, they were just so pleased it was going to actually be done. Rick, you'd probably be the only one that was participating in that. Uh, but yeah. Lucas, how, you know, it's no secret that Mount Carmel has had their share of issues over the years. How, like, what are you hearing from them? Are they committed to a 100-bed hospital? Or is it just, it's somewhere in their crystal ball plans that they someday would like to have a, like? Do something similar. They are not looking at a full hospital for this site. There. That was in their plans initially. Yeah, so. But their plans have changed in how they provide care. Right, so even like what they just did in Grove City, you know, they built a hospital in Grove City, full hospital, but what they did was relocate it out of Franklinton. Yeah, right. So, I don't remember what that was called now. It was on Town Street there. Yeah. Now Carmel West. Not oh, Carmel West. Yeah. I'm saying West. You get freaked out. West to the east. I didn't hear you were facing away from me. Yeah. Um, so that, that yeah, so they relocated it out of, and the reason was because most of the people with income had moved out to the suburbs, and that Franklinton area, you know, was a drain on them <coughs> to to serve that community. And so they, they left some services there, but the full hospital relocated so that they can make better profits. And they look at their zip codes on where the patients are being served from. And that's where they look at relocating themselves. I Do tried to explain that concept to Debbie Penzone, that there's money out here in the southeast of <laughs> Columbus, but she doesn't want to hear it. I mean, Children's, <laughs> children's Hospital does the same thing. So this Children's um, close, to home. close to Home Center. <coughs> does very, very well. They're very busy. They've exceeded all their expectations there. They have a desire to grow their presence, but they don't have anywhere to do it there. So, you know, I unfortunately have to visit Westerville close to home center frequently. <laughs> Broken arms and, you know, all kinds of fun stitches and things like that. And they have a huge amount of services. And they're, they occupy three buildings now, um, just there. So you think the amount of services they can provide on an outpatient level are, are significant. Um, if, we, if they had the space to grow. Do you think when we talk about like these physician-owned facilities and um, some of the needs for that, 
does that dynamic change knowing that there won't be a full-fledged hospital there or does it just make it more appealing or is it neutral? I guess when I think about like the Ortho One and that nice building, it's in a shopping district, you know? It's not really, um, it's not near any hospital. You're talking about the one at East Center? Yeah, the one, the one at East Center. I'm like, where would the closest yeah. major yeah. hospital be? Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess they have they, the one there on, on just off Broad Street, across from Mount Carmel East. Well, they won't leave that building. They have a big facility there as well. They won't leave it. But the, the surgery center at Easton, I guess, isn't located in a geographical close proximity to a hospital. So right. I guess I'm talking myself out of, at first it was a good idea, then it was a bad idea, then it's like, oh, okay, I so it really is a different, I mean, yeah. People, people associate medical with other medical in the area, and so mm -hmm. you see they kind of congregate all to the yeah. one area, you know, around Riverside, and around St. Anne's, so like Westerville has what they call a medical mile as you go up Cleveland Avenue, so it starts with St. Anne's, and then you have a number of medical providers, you have an orthopedic one office there, you have, um, there's an urgent care, there's a Ohio Health facility to the north on Polaris, so you've got a whole mile that's, you know, medical or they uses that are there. Because <coughs> you know, frequently a physician would have uh, with a, um, they have the ability to, to operate at the hospital, but they want to have their own privileges. Services. Yeah, privileges. Yeah. So, you know, they're, that's where you use it. Like, Lancaster's a great one. You see all the people that are around it, all the surgeons and stuff, that's because you know, they need their privileges at Lancaster, but yet they still have their own offices. Yeah. So, but, but you just think about, you know, there's 5,000 <coughs> in Columbus in close proximity to Canal Winchester. Those are people that all need medical services. Mm -hmm. Right? And the only options they have right now is they can go to Refugee Road, to Ohio Health, they can come this way, that's what makes sense. Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise they're going to downtown, maybe to Grant, is that the next closest facility? Or Carmel and East. East is not that close, but mm -hmm. it's, yeah, you need more specialty care. If you've been shot, go to Grant. <laughs> I'm not speaking from experience, but... <laughs> It's a trauma. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's what you trying to say. Like, or what, you go to Lancaster, or you go, where do you go? Okay. Yeah. 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 Waterloo. It's fine. So if you said that the one acreage that we have there in the corner, that's not really usable for a medical complex. We have this eight acres, but it's just really access. Because so there's no we, access, yeah. If we looked at, you know, maybe there's a loop road here, maybe we have some type of access to get us back there where we can use that, but essentially there's no access to those parcels. So if we had a 30 physician group come and say, we want to build a outpatient surgery center in Canal Winchester, do we have any place right now that has access, utilities, that we could say construct here. Yeah, Taylor and Sons. Taylor and Sons. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> there's eight acres right there, yeah. right? Yeah. Or just across the street, there's seven acres right there. Yeah. You know, and those are those are areas that we look at as the potential to have office mm -hmm. on those parcels. Right. Yeah, That's a good transition between those. Is that car wash still going up there? Yes. On Starland Music, 35 acres right there. Right. So you've got this 35 acres as well that could be a good location. It's zoned out for dental office, so. But otherwise, we would look right. We would look at the area where we were just looking at the area just south of this. This eight acres here would be ideal for that use. So that's where we've been directing people. But it's just it's a challenge right now with some of the issues we have dealing with with Mount Carmel. So I think we'll get there. But it's just we need easements and things like that to extend roadways and stay sign. The bigger the entity, the more time it takes. Can you, can you have a spur that will go into the Canal Winchester Outpatient Surgery Center? I've already named it. And could you have a spur that would go out to the light without really impacting or needing Daily Ridge permission? Like, would there be another you way? You can't do an outpatient surgery center. But your deed restricts on this part. Okay, I'm sorry. I was asking that earlier about, like, what is the physical distance I have to have away from Diley Ridge to be considered that I'm okay to build there? That whole Any, anything area. Anything you see there cannot. Anything you see there cannot. Right, because of deep 
I don't foresee that they wouldn't say yes, we'll, we'll remove those deed restrictions to allow a competing entity to come in and offer services. So uh, I guess so a lot of, there are a lot of turf issues with medical. Yeah, I'm like, and, and so you're not privileges at what hospital, and I can't go here because I might upset my my master over here. So yeah. there's a lot of that that goes on that you don't think about in medical. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know if they're not going to follow through with the hundred bed hospital, like they may eventually. They will put yeah. something there. I just yeah. don't know if it'll be hundred bed hospital. Yeah, right. yeah. They're, they're going to expand services. They, they need to expand services. They know they need to expand services. It's just when's the timing right? Because they've had all these other issues, you know, they opened Grove City and had Legionnaires disease immediately. They've got the whole things that happened at Mount Carmel West with, you know, overdoses, and they just had a lot of other issues yeah. going on. Good discussions. But it will happen it will happen sooner rather than later, even if we can't put a pin on it. Yeah. But these hours, these hours fly by. You're a great group. So I kind of, assessing the last several conversations, we see this sort of partial medical corridor, and then we talk about the extension of downtown Canal Winchester into Waterloo Village, or Will, what's it, Canal Boat Point? No, oh, Canal. That's, 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 uh, yeah, that's the Bixby one that nobody likes. And then Bixby being perhaps some sort of Light residential, clean no, no, room, no, no. small water. building. Is I'm that kind of how you see these? Districts sort of playing out. That's how it's. That's how I'm starting to see this. Yeah, it's kind of just natively sort of coming together into this vision. Yeah, I mean that's the idea, right? That's that's the workshop and process. It's kind of like iterative groupthink. We talk about groupthink sometimes as a bad thing, but we can make it work, you know, to our advantage. Does everybody else kind of feel like we were coalescing around some ideas? What's nice about this, I've kind of floated this with a few people. If we think about the Dialy Road corridor kind of turning into Hill, turning into Waterloo, and then Waterloo ultimately getting that extension that takes us all the way back out to 33, then we think about one axis, AXIS, right? And think about a string of pearls, you know, hung on one, one long string. We think about that, that one road facility, whatever we call it, <coughs> at that point. You know, between Old Town, between Waterloo, you know, a medical node, medical anchor, with a mix of uses specific to those needs, as well as, you know, newer development out toward Bixby. You know, now you really have sort of a holistic concept where Canal Winchester is one kind of linear experience from one end of 33 where you get off to one end of 30, 33 where you get on. Mm -hmm. That's serving all of these different demonstrated market needs yeah. with thoughtful planning in place. Right? So it's not just cookie cutter. We're not just going to say, okay, well, we'll wait for this to happen and then approve it, but thoughtful planning in place that's contextually oriented around each of those. You put it in your That's what I've gotten out of this. 